I welcome you and thank you all for coming to a, to a lovely evening, which is really going to be a transition evening for us from celebrating the inauguration of a new president to uh, the celebration, the beginning of the celebration of our 25th anniversary as an institution. Um, there are two uh, very special ladies in my life that um, have been very, very supportive of me in all of my transitions, and I would like to publicly thank them. And um, Oksana, And as many of you know, I have a little girl. She still is my little girl, and you'll see she is kind of tiny, but she's still my little girl, and uh, I'm so happy that uh, she and her husband, Kevin, came here, and um, they've blessed me with uh, two grandchildren, Owen and Madeline, named after my mother. So, Emily, could you come up, and I'd like to give you some flowers. We, um, we get into these jobs, any of those of you, I, I saw, to, saw Dr. Mojok here, anybody who gets into these jobs as, as presidents of institutions, we love these institutions. They become very much a part of us and our families. But when you first enter these, you, you really are kind of struggling for not only an identity for the institution, but an identity for yourself in that institution. And uh, I have many wonderful friends here this evening who were affiliated with me with Franklin Pierce University. And uh, when I was first working on developing the board with the trustees, um, I made an overture to a wonderful gentleman who uh, has made an enormous difference at, at Franklin Pierce, including adding his name uh, to a center there, the Fitzwater Center for Communications, which really did define Franklin Pierce for certainly my presidency. And so it's my honor to introduce to you Marlon Fitzwater, a very dear friend, and uh, Marlon, thank you for coming here. <clears throat> thank you very much, George. I, I got this right here. There we go. I, uh, I'm delighted to be here, and I want to thank George for that kind introduction. That's for all of you who may have mistaken me for the former governor of Minnesota, Jesse the Body of Ventura. <laughs> and I love, I love all the flowers. I must say I thought Oksana and Emily had just won the snowboarding championship. Uh, but it's, uh, I'm delighted to see uh, so many members of George's family and, and all of his extended families from all different areas of his life, and so it's a great uh, honor for me to be here tonight. I, uh, I know that uh, a lot of people don't remember my years with President Reagan and President Bush, and it has been a lot of years since I was on television regularly. Uh, I'm reminded of this by not too long ago, a fellow wrote into one of the magazines in uh, the area where I live and said that he had uh, been uh, in Annapolis, Maryland, which is near my home, and he had gone to a restaurant where he walked in and saw me in the lobby. He said he walked over and he said, aren't you Marlon Fitzwater? And I said, well, yes, I am. And we had a nice talk, apparently about the, the years after the White House and all of that. 
and he went into another room and he said that he called his waitress over and he said do you know that you have Marlon Fitzwater in this restaurant and she said well no but we have Evian and Deer Park at the bar <laughs> It keeps you humble, you know. <laughs> In any case, it's been 17 years since I first met George Haggerty, and I'd like to offer him a toast this evening by telling you all a few stories about how that all happened. First of all, just out of the blue, in 1997, I got a call from Dr. Haggerty saying he was a friend of a friend and uh, he had just become president of a small college in New Hampshire. I, of course, had never heard of him or the small college. <laughs> and most of my memories of New Hampshire were either about the cold or about just losing the last election. So I wasn't exactly overwhelmed by this possibility. But he asked if I would be interested in joining the Franklin Pierce University Board of Trustees, at that time Franklin Pierce College. And I was on a couple of corporate boards at the time, but no nonprofits, and so I was interested. And uh, I asked for some materials on the school, and I asked for a chance to visit the campus before saying yes. But I did it. And I went up there and had a beautiful uh, visit, but I did notice a couple of strange things. One, it was snowing in springtime. <laughs> And the other was everybody I talked to was so proud of George Haggerty. And he'd only been there a year or so. So I was a little nervous about this whole thing. I just didn't quite know what to make of it. And it turns out that Dr. Haggerty arrived on the New Hampshire campus. And he walked on, took one look around, and filled the potholes, and built a big bubble about two football fields long with enough uh, indoor physical fitness equipment to uh, entertain these kids through about a hundred snowstorms and and they thought he was the greatest thing that ever that ever lived now I must say I just finished four years at that time with President George Herbert Walker Bush and he had just helped in the Cold War and then he worked with Mikhail Gorbachev to rebuild and establish democracies in Eastern Europe and after all that, the press still said, well, this man doesn't have any vision. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's funny. I got a guy named Haggerty over here that he established his vision with a bunch of potholes and a bubble. <laughs> Everybody said he had a vision. And I might add that three of my fellow trustees at that first board meeting uh, 17 years ago, actually four, are here tonight. And there's five or six others who were staff people or faculty uh, at the college. And they're all here to see George off on this new adventure. In any case, a couple years later after that, uh, Dr. Haggerty called me up again out of the blue and said, would you meet me at a hotel in Washington? I have a room there for us and we can have a private meeting. And I thought, George Haggerty wants to have a private meeting. What is this all about? Not, I'm going to get fired or what? <laughs> and I said, no, George, let's don't go to all that trouble. It costs a lot of money, and I've got to get on an airplane and all that stuff. Why don't we just, why don't let's meet at the airport? So he said, okay. And he said, where? I said, how about the Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> kiosk in Washington, at National Airport? So he said, okay. And we got there. We had a nice little visit. And finally, after we sat down, George said, you know, Communications is the largest major at our school. And we need to, uh, to do some work on the building and so forth. And I was wondering how you'd feel about having your name on a new communications building. Well, I said, you know, I wasn't born yesterday, George. <laughs> and I may be famous, but I can't afford to build that building for you. He said, well, I'll tell you what. Can we use your name? I said, well, if you promise not to ruin it. <laughs> and he did. But then he said, good. What we'd like to do is hold a big dinner here in Washington. Invite all your friends and announce we're going to build a new center for TV and radio studios and classrooms and the latest technology. I thought, this guy is crazy. 
First of all, nobody's going to come to this dinner, and nobody's ever heard of this college. I don't know how we could ever pull this off. But of course, they did come, and George did pull it off, and the Fitzwater Center for Communications was dedicated four years later. And over a few more years, Franklin Pierce College became a university. Not only that, we learned that when George Hagrey sets his mind and his vision to something, it happens. He knows how to use the natural assets that he has given. He can see around corners, as we used to say in the press secretary business. He understands the importance of the dream, and he has great compassion for the students. He understands financing and leveraging and getting things done. If you've got potholes, he'll fix them. <laughs> so it's not surprising to me that when I first arrived at Leesburg just a month ago for my annual winter stay at the Villages, the first thing I saw was a banner across Main Street welcoming Beacon College students back to campus. And then I got home and in my computer was a series of pictures designing a new vision for the Beacon College campus. I turned to my wife and said, George is here. <laughs> <laughs> and tonight, of course, he's wearing a new gold medal, bigger than the Congressional Medal of Honor, I must say. <laughs> but it shows the confidence that this community is putting in him. And I just want to tell you that he's a great guy, and he'll live up to the billing. So I want to offer this toast to his inauguration and to the Board of Trustees of this college, and to all of you who care so much about the students who study here. Thank you very much to Dr. Haggerty. Sometime I'll tell you a few stories about Marlon, all right? <laughs> Marlon, thank you very much for that, um, for those kind words, and for the toast. Now comes the transition. Um, as I said in my remarks, institutions founded after about 1820 haven't had uh, a great shelf life. Many institutions have uh, not made it more than uh, 10 years, 30 years, 50 years. This little institution has made it 25 with an incredible mission, and it will make it far longer into the centuries. I'm absolutely certain of it, because we do some extraordinary things with students who want that chance. And it is my privilege right now to call upon the chair of the Board of Trustees, Eileen Maranakis, to introduce a member of the board who has been so instrumental in the development of the Beacon College community. His name is Dr. Vincent Sicalella, and I will call up Chair Maranakis. Thank you. Thank you. I promise to keep this short, but this message is essential. The Board of Trustees has been blessed to have a dedicated member who has served Beacon College for 20 years. That is a remarkable period of time. When the Board of Trustees began to talk about the fact that Vinny was leaving, we said among ourselves, how long has he been on this board? And there were all kinds of numbers that popped up, and the only thing that we could agree upon was that he came in on the ark. <laughs> he, he's been here a very long time, and of course, you know, Vinny, we say that with love. Vinny Ziccolella and his dear wife, Judy, are seated at table nine. Vinny, would you please stand up for a minute? We can't talk about you without you being seen. 
Vinny has a history in special education, so he brings a talent that some of us do not have. Um, the board is blessed to have a mix of people from various fields, various backgrounds, and together we have been working diligently and together we discover George Haggerty. So we expect good days to come and uh, Vinny has offered to stay in the loop so that we know we can contact him when we need to tap his experience and his talent. Thank you, Vinny. Would you please come up? We have a token, and I'm going to read the inscription. Dr. Vincent Zicalella, bestowed with affection and respect for your 20 years of leadership. Thank you. Thank you. You will be missed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Believe it or not, I had hair and I had a 34-inch waist when I started here. Uh, Seriously, uh, about 20 years ago, uh, Deborah Broadback called me. She had worked for me at the uh, school district and said, would you like to be on the board of trustees at a college? And I said, how many students do you have at the college? She said 19. <laughs> well, I came to Leesburg for the first time and my wife said, oh my God. <laughs> there was one, one uh, store that was uh, open and uh, it was quite a depressed area. And uh, thanks to Deborah's hard work and the Board of Trustees, uh, Leesburg is what it is today. It's part of the reason why the college has contributed so much to this community. But the real heart of this program has always been the mission. The mission is always the foremost thing that I've always thought was something special, and it is special. Every time I was committed to a lot of different things in New York. I would uh, come back up and I'd say, you know, I think I'll resign from the board. And I'd get the opportunity to sit with some of the youngsters uh, during lunch or talk to them on the street. And I said to myself, I can't leave. I love this place. And, and again, it's, it's so important. We've had such a good group here and I feel so comfortable. This is Dr. Haggerty's day. And, and the reason I, I think I'm so comfortable in resigning is because Dr. Haggerty is taking over and I know the future of this college is secure for many years to come. So thank you, Dr. Haggerty. Thank all of you. Thank the Board of Trustees for putting up with me for 20 years. And uh, I really appreciate all of your support. And I love this place. I love the mission. And my heart is always going to be part of Beacon College. Thank you so much. Madam Chair, I think uh, we could offer a toast to Beacon College and its 25th anniversary. Here, here. Here, here. Bon appetit. Thank you.